day of. There's a cry that's been crying out for the last 2,000 years. And you can still hear it to this day. Thank you. 
He's worthy to be praised. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's an ever-changing God. Yeah. 
Can you understand that God He sent His only Son into this world? We do everything about everything that we need to know. He knew where everybody was walking and living. Even times when we were always serving Him, times we make wrong turns in life, bad choices. Knowing all this, only thing He had in His heart is to think about how He can save our soul, how He can open our eyes to bring us into the kingdom of God, to bring into His grace and mercy, to think that that He would look beyond our failures and shortcomings and will give you a lot more grace now than ever before. Because He knows perfectly well that we could never make it on our own. And we need something more than what I can do. And Jesus will just open up the, our hearts and we open our hearts to Him and say, Here I am, God. Begin to pray a prayer to Him.
he has not forgotten you. Do you think that nobody cares, nobody knows, nobody understands? You don't know who to turn to. You don't know who to ask for help. But even if you did, they can't help you in the midst of your situation. Because you've got your back against the wall and you feel like you're at the end of yourself. You may even thought about, well, what's the use of living? You almost attempted to throw your life away because it looks like you're not going anywhere. That's when Jesus said, listen, I hear your cry and I'm not going to let you stay in that situation. But I'm going to come down from heaven and I'm going to touch you. And I'm going to open your eyes and I'm going to bring you out of your bondage. I'm going to set you free. I'm going to give you a new start in life. Isn't God good, amen? amen? That He actually wants to do this for you. You know, we have a hard time receiving from God because we're so busy condemning ourselves that we don't think God can have mercy on us, amen? Do you understand what I'm saying? We're hard on ourselves because we think God don't care, but He doesn't really care. He cares more than you realize. And that's why we need to open our hearts to Him and ask Him to help us. Amen. We call this fellowship night. We come to worship and praise God and bring our hearts before God. And if you're sick, you can reach out and God can heal you. When your heart is broken, it needs to be touched. Sometimes it's so broken and so hurt that you can't even cry no more. Your heart can get so hard as a rock. But deep inside that cry is still inside.
my father who is the only one that believes in God and he's the one that talks to me about God and I'm just inside. So every time I went to church, I was there for God. I used to sing for him because I sing good and then I got involved in false religions and every time I wanted to get close to God, he always told me it's a mystery. And in my heart I felt no. I want to know who made that beautiful tree and that bird, and, and I wake up to the sunshine, and, the, and I, now I'm 63 years old, and I just saw God, and I'm so happy, my tears of joy, I don't, I used to cry of sadness and hurt, I've had views all my life, even ate my vomit, and I never lost faith. I gave up on who I wanted. I wanted to know him, and I know him now. And I thank God with all my heart and soul. Praise God. revival with the native people 
and uh, that was in Sandy Lake years ago, so going back about maybe 20 years. And in the word that God spoke at that time, he said, it's going to start with them because the native people have been brought right down to the thing, and therefore you can't go any further down than you are, and they have no other choice but to look up. And, and when they begin to look up and cry to God, they're already broken and humbled, and it's easy for them to ask for help because there's nowhere else to go. As a result of that, the Lord said He's going to raise them up because there's nothing in the way of their heart to come to God because God has prepared them already. And as a result, there's going to be anointing broke through, breaking through in in the north, amen, among the reserves to the point that we call it the white man will have to travel to the reserves just to see how to catch that fire. But the problem is that even if they go up there, they have to deal with themselves. You see, white man is prime. They don't think they need to get right with God. They think that they can live any old way and get away with it. See, they're lacking humility. They're lacking repentance on their part. And that's the reason God's going to start there. And it's going to provoke white man to jealousy. And as a jealousy that's going to drive them to begin to pray and seek God. To, because they will want to have what they have. And that's when God's going to change everything. And the revival is going to break forth as a result of that. Now, he says also here, interesting thing, I'm going to read Psalms 34, 6. A poor man cried. Notice, a poor man. Now, whether the man is poor spiritually or whether he's poor naturally. Amen. When you're poor, think about somebody that's poor. Somebody that seems like they don't have nothing in their life to, to say, I got something to show forth in my life. They're poor, they're not, they, they're not smart, or they don't have intelligence, or they don't have, you know, they're not well off, or they're in the midst of crisis, they're just poor, right on the bottom. You, you know, a lot of times when people are in that condition, they get kicked around and walked on and spit upon and mistreated. But it says the poor man crying, so he starts crying, you know. Even though nobody's hearing, but in his heart he's crying. And he's crying to God because he needs to be set free from the bondage he's in. And the Lord hears him. You know, because he hears the cry of the poor. And then, what does he do? He saves him. He saves him out of all his troubles. In other words, he doesn't leave you in that place. He says, I'm going to bring you up out of there. I'm going to open the, the doors of heaven and bring you into the presence of the Almighty God. So, so, so if you feel at times that you're very poor, then you need to understand where you are. Amen. We got the whole city here that's poor. I mean, just go downtown, you can see it. They're living in tents. I already went, three o'clock I went down there and I passed out some flyers so people can come here. And, and the thing is, uh, at least we're letting them know that they can come here. And uh, people are open, they're interested in, and of course, you know, it's going to take more than just invitations. A little flyer, it's going to take prayer. And they're going to have to, whether they realize it or not, they're crying out there. Amen. But you see, until the man begins to cry is, is when God responded to, 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 to answer his prayer. He, he cried to God because I need help. 
And if you realize if you're in a situation and, and you need help, and they, until you start crying for help, God's just waiting until you do. Amen. There's another one here. He says, Psalms 34, 4 says, I sought the Lord. Now here's a person that's looking to the Lord. About what? About yourself. And he heard me, right? So when the Lord, when you see God and he hear, he heard, hears you, then you have the assurance of knowing that he's going to answer you. And what is he going to do? Deliver you from all your fears. It's quite obviously that he must have a lot of fears. Un uncertainties, insecurities. Not sure which way to turn. So if you're in this place and, and you're seeking God, just, know, just reassure yourself he's hearing you. He's not going to leave you there. People ask me for the last 20 years, how in the world did I survive here? I sought the Lord and he heard me. <laughs> Psalms 34, 17 says, the righteous cry. You know, that means the person that's righteous is walking in a place with God and is, is, is it walking in obedience with the, with the Lord. Now, this is a person that's righteous. Even the righteous cry. And the Lord hear it. And deliver them out of all their troubles. Even if your back's against the wall, look like it was totally impossible and you can't go left or right. Because you prayed and you asked God, He delivered you, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Exodus 3, 7 clearly declares that the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, and they say, which, is, which are in Egypt, but in this case, Egypt is to us is like the world. I see the affliction of my people who are in the world. Did you know that because we're in this world, we are experiencing most unusual afflictions that we're experiencing through the circumstances of everyday living. Amen. As a result, you got to understand that God sees it. It's not like He's blind. He knows it. Amen. And when you realize He sees it, but He sees everything. He knows when you're up and he knows when you're down. He knows if you're discouraged. He knows if you're frustrated. He knows when you get mad or when you're glad. He sees it all. He knows when you're not serving him. He knows when you are. He, he sees what you're doing is right or what is wrong. He sees it all. Whether we think it's right or wrong. He sees it all. But at the same time, when he sees the afflictions and when people are in Egypt, in the world, he had to understand when they were in affliction, they weren't perfect. By no means, no way were they in their right standing. No way could you say that these people were in the place that they were in, okay, they were messed up. But God see them. He saw every weakness, every bondage, everything that's happened in your life. Every person, let's think about the whole entire world, you know. You don't really know that until you go to the third world countries and you really see what they're really into. And they're really crying to the Lord. Know this. And he says, and have heard their cry. Can you stop to think that God's hearing your cry about you? And what you're going through, it's got to come very personal because you got to realize God hears, God sees, right? And then he says he knows by the reason of your taskmasters. Taskmasters uh, are, are whatever is causing you to be in the bondage that you're in. 
Can you imagine being in bondage to something in your life, whether you're bound by some kind of weakness or sin or fear or doubt or circumstance? It's like you're under someone else's control, like a taskmaster. Amen. They cry. When people are in bondage, you cannot say, I'm happy and I'm shouting and I'm glad and everything's okay, because it's not. So I know your sorrows. I mean, I've been watching, um, for an example, we all been praying for my brother Calco. You know, he fell over and knocked his head and he started bleeding inside his brain. Then it stopped. And then they gave him more dialysis and they came here and they fell over the second time and they took everything for us to lift him off the ground. <laughs> Me and Greg. So then things they get better. By that night he was just like delusional. He fell on the fell off the um, the couch, slid off a bit, and we had to try to lift him up again, but we did with Kevin. We got him into the bed, he got up and then he says, I feel a little dizzy. So I took his blood pressure with a little thing around your wrist. His heart was going 144 and his blood pressure was 90 over 60. And so we said, okay, well, we call the ambulance. Now, we brought him in. He was there for about a day or so. Went dialysis on Saturday. And that night, they decided to, that they discovered with, uh, I guess with the CAT scan that he was bleeding inside his head. So they knew they had to get the pressure off of him. And did you know that all this was happening, he didn't really know what was happening. He don't remember anything. He don't remember going to the... He didn't remember going <laughs> to the hospital <coughs> with an ambulance. So they finally called and I answered and uh, I called them and, and said, okay, you know, they're going to operate on it. I said, okay, uh, I'm, I'm consenting with him. He's in agreement, so we do. Now, you see, they were worried because if he has an operation, he might die, not might even make it. And they were asking questions like, if he dies, will you let him die? I said, no, sir. If he dies, we resurrect him. That's it. <laughs> We're not going to let him die just because the doctor wants to shut the machine off. I said, you know, no. Well, anyway, all the operation went fine and then he got into that, that life-saving unit that you can breathe and machine pumps and everything does everything for you. After he was on that for, the, for that night, next morning they took it off and he was okay. I went to see him and he was still a little drowsy because it's just an operation. Did you know that I, yesterday I went to see him and for the first time, I would say in the last four months, first time in the last four months that he actually made sense what he said. For the first time, and I mean, to me, okay, okay, he got the drink, the drink came out and something came out, whatever came out, but, but the thing is what I'm understanding, he's got a clear mind, he's onto himself and he's joking around and, and he's not, he, he's, he's back to himself. In fact, I haven't seen him like that. Um, for the last four months, he's been going like touch and go up and down. Like I, I, I know that he wasn't feeling good, but he looks a hundred percent better now. So I know when we were praying for him that he got more than just a, just a Lord spare him. 
Maybe they didn't knock on his head to get him straight, but <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. But praise God, they were hers anyway. But anyway, but I know that God did more to him than just the operation. God did something much more deeper inside of him that I believe that that's changed his whole course. Because that's what we ask God to do a miracle. You see the poor crying and the Lord hear it and delivers him from all his troubles. That's exactly what happened. Hallelujah. If we can understand, if we can pray for him, then God can do that for him. Just think what God can do for you in your situation if you bring your need before God and realize and begin to sincerely bring up your heart that's broken and cry to Him and say, I, I'm tired of what I'm going through and I don't like where I'm at and I don't want this no more. Do something. Just like the children of Israel. When they're in bondage, they were fed up. I think that, I think sooner or later Canadians are going to get fed up what's going on. They're going to finally stand up and say, enough is enough. We're not playing these games no more. This is no longer a joke. This is not no longer right. Nobody's going to take our rights and freedom away from us. Amen. Amen. And that's not a rebellious attitude, that's a righteous attitude that we want to do what is right. And have faith because we're not going to go down, we're going up. Amen? Amen? Now, as a result of that, when they begin to cry to God and God sees the needs of Canadians, He sees the problems in the whole world, He sees the problems, everything that's happening in the world at this very moment, He's going to say, okay, it's now my turn. Yep. This is what we have to understand. He said, I'm coming down now. It's my turn. They pushed you far enough. They, they've done you things that they should never have done. Now it's time for God to step down from his throne. And when he's coming down, he says, I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to set you free. And I'm going to set my fire and my anointing and power. I'm going to deliver my people. Amen. 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 Yeah. When that was taking place in Egypt in the time of Pharaoh and, and with Moses, it's going to happen in these last days before the coming of the Lord. And it's, it's about to start. But there's something that has to happen to every one of us. We need to open our hearts and be honest with God about what we're struggling with and be not afraid to give it to Him. Because it has to do with us being set free. How can we set the rest of the world free if we don't deal with ourselves? Do you understand? You see, God says He heard our cry. I'm coming down and I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to bring you out of the bondage that you're emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, or whatever. And He's going to deliver us. He's going to bring us into this cool place in the presence of God, where Christ's life comes alive inside of you, the real liberty and the freedom comes when Jesus Christ comes inside of us and fills us with the Holy Ghost that sets us free from the captivity of this world and sets us free from the weakness of our sinful flesh and gives us a new life on the inside. You see, God's no respect a person. You don't care who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what nationality you are. Doesn't matter if you're black, white, or red, or yellow, amen. Or if you have to be green, you don't mind that either. But <laughs> I don't think we got any green people around, but unless they eat too much of something else. <laughs> oh my God. So, so we have to understand that it is God's will. When the letter came to Jesus, if it be your will, 
You can make me clean. If it's your will. Why did he say if it's your will? Because he had so much doubt about anybody giving help to him because he was being condemned continually. That he even questioned Jesus. If it be your will, Lord, if you can do something, please. But nevertheless, he said also, but I know you can. Amen. Know that you can set me free. You can make me whole. And Jesus answered, I will. Think about Jesus looking at you and said, I will heal you. He says, I will set you free. Well, how many often? Oh, yeah, you want to offer it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. I forget it. If I don't ask, you don't tell me, you know. You just give me the offering, whatever you want to give. God will bless you. Hallelujah. But before we take up the offering, let me ask you a question. What is your cry that you want to live to God today? What is it you want God to do for you that you know that you can't do? Right. What is your need? What is it you want God to do? Irregardless of what you're facing. For one minute, just stop and think. Just think what God wants to do for you. He's asking you. Because he's hearing your cry. You may have not openly cried about it or asked God, but God's heard your anguish, burden. Life is not fair at times, amen. But God loves you. You got it all? Oh yeah, one more there. <laughs> And if you want us to pray for you right now, you don't have to come up to the front. I don't have to put on the show. You that are watching on YouTube, you can pray as well. But I want you to raise your hands to the Lord for whatever the need that you have, that you want God to do for you. Reason when you raise your hand, you're reaching out to God now in faith. Amen. Even though it may look totally impossible, say, God, this is it. That's right. He sees us, but He wants us to respond to it. Because if we don't respond to it, He can't, he can't help you. He says, Lord, have mercy on me. Right? Is that too hard? If you haven't given your heart to Jesus, then do that. If you already have them, just want to renew your relationship back with Him, then you do that. You say that when you pray. Amen. Jesus didn't always stop and pray for every person that he prayed for. They knew what to do and they prayed when he's preaching and they were changed because they were in the presence of God. Amen. So let's pray. Anybody here that needs something from God, just raise your hands. Amen. It's okay. Nobody else is here but us. <laughs> Father, we thank you, God, every person, every heart that's raised towards you, whether your hands are up or your heart's reaching to God in your situation, and we ask you to intervene and come down from heaven and deal and deliver every person, even those that are watching on YouTube, that every need, doesn't matter if you need to be delivered, healed, or set free from whatever you're going through, you want your circumstance to change tonight, tonight's a good night to do it. And we do this in Jesus' name, right now. Amen. 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 Praise, God. Praise God. Okay, offering. Father, we bless the offering. Bless the hands that gave and bless them that couldn't give because they can give in the future. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, like a note.